Hey guys, what's up? My name is Mike Levitsky, and today we're going to be talking about cowbells. I have five cowbells with me, all of different sizes and lengths and depths, and they all have a different sound to them. And so first we're going to listen to all five cowbells together and uh, some just silly grooves that I try to come up with using all five cowbells. And then we're going to listen to each cowbell individually uh, in two different grooves and see how the size of a cowbell uh, will affect the way a groove sounds. And I do this because when I first started playing drums, I didn't really know what type of cowbell to buy. And cowbells are a little bit expensive, especially if you don't have that much money. And you order one and you hope for the best that it's going to sound the way that you expect for it to sound. And so hopefully this way I'll give you five cowbells back to back to back to back and you can pick out which cowbell you like the best. I'll put links in the description down below for each one of these cowbells or at least as close of a match as I can find. And that way you can uh, click on that and, and purchase that if you'd like to. So without further ado, let's listen to these five cowbells. It's so hard. They're all over the place. <laughs> it's so hard. Okay, here's one uh, using triplets. <laughs> All right, and here's kind of like a dance kind of thing. Oi. All right, guys, there's grooves using five cowbells. That's really complicated because they're all different pitches, and you're trying to think about what the pitch of the cowbell is and then hit it without hitting the right symbol. And so uh, if you want to develop your creativity, I highly suggest setting up a bunch of different pitches on your drum set and then trying to create grooves that use those pitches and try mixing them up. I've set these cowbells up today so that if I play right, left, right, left, right, they go from highest pitch to lowest pitch. So again, right, left, right, left, right, kind of working my way down. And then I can play up if I play left, right, or right, left, right, left, right. So that groove that I was playing, I was playing. But if I wanted to go down, I'd have to play lead with my left hand. So that makes for some interesting things because your stickings then are not just patterns that you memorize, but they are actually pitches that you are trying to play uh, while you play. So uh, I set these five cowbells up today and just kind of mess around them for 20 minutes and tried to figure out some things that I could play to demonstrate them. But now let's listen to them individually. And I'll start from the lowest pitched one and go up to the highest pitched one. After we do that, I'll give you some of the measurements of the cowbells. I'll talk a little bit about how I like to set them up and where I like to use them. And then after that, I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to add a cowbell to your setup or if you uh, say, yeah, cowbells aren't for me. So let's take a listen to these five cowbells individually.
All right, there you have it. So five different cowbells, each color the groove in slightly different ways. And some of you guys might have liked the sound of the bigger cowbell. Some of you guys might have liked the sound of the smaller cowbell. Everyone has their own personal preference. And so don't let anyone tell you which cowbell you should be playing. You are your own kind of artist. And so allow yourself to speak through whatever cowbell you like, or if you don't like any cowbell. Uh, some guys use a frying pan. Some guys use like a piece of metal. Uh, go around your house and see what kind of things you can find that'll emulate this sound. Let me go ahead and give you a few of the measurements, and then we'll talk a little bit about how you can mount a cowbell on your drum set. So the first cowbell that I used uh, was seven and a half inches deep. It's a salsa, LP salsa bell. It's two inches by five and a half inches. And the, uh, the model number here is ES5 on the side. The next one is also an LP. In fact, all these cowbells are LP. I don't know how I ended up with all LP cowbells. These are just cowbells that I've collected over the years. And apparently I, I buy LP, probably because they're the cheapest. And uh, I haven't really had lots of money throughout my life. And so I've ended up with these ones. This one actually came with my first drum set, though, which is pretty cool. So I've had this cowbell for over 20 years. Uh, I also have the original ride cymbal that came with my first drum set. So those are kind of neat. So this cowbell is, is also an LP. The, uh, the number on it, or the, the model number, I can't really see. I put some electrical tape on it to kind of calm down a little bit of the ring. Um, but it is eight inches deep, and it is three and a quarter by four and a half. So there's that bell. Uh, the next one here is also an LP, and this is five and a half deep, and then it's two and a half by four and a quarter. That's this bell. Uh, the next one down is also an LP salsa. Now, this one I can read. This is a uh, ES12 cha-cha low pitch, and it is uh, five, uh, four and three quarters deep, uh, and then it's two and a quarter by four and three quarters. And then the last one is an LP Aspire, and I think this is kind of their entry or budget level cowbell and uh, or line. And this is four and a half inches deep, and it's three and a half by uh, just about two inches. So let's talk quickly about how I mount a cowbell or the way that I found that I like the best. There's lots of ways to mount a cowbell. You can see there's an L bracket here that attaches to the hi-hat stand. Here on my bass drum, I have uh, an LP uh, hoop mount bracket. You can also try to put a cowbell on top of a cymbal stand. Or here I have a, um, a cymbal stacker. You can put a cowbell on there if you unscrew it. Put the cowbell on there and then screw it on, and then you can get it on top of a cymbal stand. Um, so there's lots of ways to mount a cowbell. My favorite is right in the middle. Uh, I can get to it with my right hand or my left hand. Uh, and I also, I like to set it up so when I'm doing a cross stick, it's a little high right now. So I like to set it up when I'm doing a cross stick, I get a nice cross stick sound, so. I can get that, but if I pull it back just a little bit, I'll get a cowbell sound, so I can. I can get a, a bell sound. And I don't remember who I saw doing that. I, I think it was Horatio Hernandez, um, but I'm not 100% sure. But I've just found that to be kind of fun so I can get a little extra cowbell uh, stroke with my left hand if I'm playing cross stick stuff, if I'm doing any kind of Latin. So uh, that's how I like to do it. But again, you're free to experiment. I always suggest experimenting. So try cowbell on your right side, try it on your left side, try it far over your floor tom, and just see what works for you. Each place that you put it is going to cause you to uh, think differently and probably play different grooves. So this time was not really a lesson on how to play a groove, but instead a lesson on how your drums kind of sound with, with different instruments. I hope this one helped you out. Uh, now that we're all kind of quarantined and cooped up, I'm hoping to get you guys a lesson every day. I can't guarantee it. It really depends on how my kids uh, participate and uh, what they do. But right now they're... Uh, they're hanging out and being quiet, and so I appreciate that. And hopefully you appreciate that because you get to hear this video. So let me play you out, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>